Hello and welcome to Droix. Today we are checking out the new 1x Player Mini Windows Gaming Handheld. We will be unboxing it, taking a closer look at the device's features and then running some system and gaming benchmarks. We are not only testing with the internal GPU but also with a 3070 Ti external graphics card. As always, let's get started with the unboxing. First up, we have the One X Player Mini, which we will take a closer look at shortly. Underneath is a user guide, which is in Chinese and English. In the first box, there is a 100 watts charger. It has a USB Type A port and three USB Type C ports, which is very handy. We will include the correct charger adapter for your country when ordering. And in the second box we have a USB Type-C charge cable. We have a One X Player 1S above to compare the sizes. The One X Player Mini measures 10.23 by 4.1 by 0.9 inches and weighs 589 grams. The display is a 7 inch IPS touchscreen with a native resolution of 1920 by 1200. On the left side is a clickable left analog stick and classic D-pad. There are back and home buttons. On the right side are four gaming buttons and right clickable analog stick. There is a start button at the top and towards the bottom are on-screen keyboard and night mode toggle buttons. On the top are left and right shoulder and linear analog trigger buttons. There is a power button and volume rocker. And further to the right there is a 3.5mm headphone jack, a USB Type-C for Thunderbolt port and USB 3 port. And finally on the bottom is another USB Type-C for Thunderbolt port. The One X Player Mini features the same processor found in the One S model, which is an Intel i7 1195G7. The internal graphics are an Intel Iris Xe graphics up to 1.4 GHz. There's 16 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and a choice of one or two terabytes of NVMe SSD. In our battery tests, we got nine hours, 10 minutes sitting idle on the desktop and 1 hour 40 minutes under full load with Street Fighter V benchmark running on loop. As part of our new review format, we will be performing some benchmark tests with different TDPs as many of you have requested this. We will also be testing with an external GPU, which is also referred to as an eGPU. We are using a GeForce 3070 Ti, which plugs into the One X Player Mini Thunderbolt port. We start our benchmarks with Passmark. It performs tests on the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage by pushing them to their max for peak performance. On 20 watts TDP we get a score of 5228. And on 35 watts we get a score of 5564. We were not able to run the 3D graphics score as our USB hub with HDMI output was having issues and Passmark does not support 1920x1200 resolution. PC Mark tests your more day to day tasks, things you might be doing whilst not playing games. These can include web browsing, working with office documents, image or video editing. On 20 watts TDP we get a score of 5313 with great scores across essentials, productivity and digital content creation. On 35 watts TDP we naturally get a higher score of 5544. For 3 d Mark, we are going to test with both the iGPU and eGPU with different TDPs to give a broader view of the performance. We are testing with 15, 20 and 35 watts TDP on the iGPU. We get scores of 864, 1245 and 1954 respectively. 
And for the eGPU, we are testing at 20 and 35 watts TDP. We get scores of 10,054 and 10,502 respectively. We start off the game's benchmarks with Forza Horizon 5. For the iGPU, we are running at 1280 by 800 and on the eGPU, we are running at 4K resolution. We start with the integrated GPU benchmarks on the very low graphic settings. At 20 watts we get a 59 frames per second average and at 35 watts we get a 65 fps average. On the external GPU benchmarks we are running at 20 watts TDP on the very low settings. We get an average frame rate of 102 frames per second. On the extreme graphic settings at 20 watts TDP we get 41 frames per second. We tried it at 35 watts TDP and also got 41 frames per second. The CPU is hovering around the 50% mark during the eGPU benchmarks. So increasing the TDP makes very little difference with an eGPU as the extra power is not required. We found this to be the same for most games. Next in our games benchmark we are testing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. For the iGPU we are running at 1280 by 800 and on the eGPU at 4K resolution. For the iGPU benchmarks we are using the lowest graphic settings. Running at 20 watts TDP we get an average of 51 FPS and on 35 watts we get a 58 frames per second average. With the eGPU running on the lowest settings, we get 109 frames per second on average. On the highest settings, we get 63 frames per second. For the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark, we are running at 1280 by 800 on the iGPU and 4K on the eGPU, both on maximum graphic settings. On the iGPU at 20 watts TDP we get a score of 3656 and at 35 watts we get 4049. On the eGPU we get a final score of 11343. For our Street Fighter V benchmark we are testing the average FPS at the end of the first match. We are running at 1920 by 1200 on the iGPU and 4K on the eGPU, both on the maximum graphic settings. On the integrated graphics at 20 watts TDP, we get an average frame rate of 39.85, and at 35 watts, we get 46.65 frames per second. You could drop the resolution or graphics and get a solid 60 FPS. On the eGPU, it barely breaks a sweat, running at a solid 60 FPS. Let's take a look at the 1x Player Mini benchmark results in full. Overall, the scores are very good. We can't do a direct comparison with other models as we are using totally different settings, but it is on par with the 1x Player 1s in comparison. We can see that increasing the TDP to 35 watts gives a nice boost in performance when used as a handheld, but be aware it will drain the battery faster. You can enjoy a good number of the latest games and depending on how demanding they are, you can play them on a mix of graphic settings from low to high. As a portable gaming handheld, the One X Player Mini is great. I know many people were put off on buying the 1S model because of its large size and I think the Mini is just the right size. It's about the size of the Eye Neo Pro in case you were wondering. It fits well in the hand and is not too heavy to be fatigued after a gaming session. And when plugged into an eGPU it essentially transforms the 1X Player Mini into a desktop style gaming PC. The processor is more than enough to play any highly demanding game and we found most of the time it was around 50% usage. You will most likely be bottlenecked by the GPU if running at 4K with the highest settings. We hope you have enjoyed the slightly new format of our handheld videos. 
If you do have any feedback on what to include or change, please let us know in the comments. That wraps up our review of the One X Player Mini. We hope you have found it useful. You can order the One X Player Mini from our store at drawix.co.uk. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and we hope to see you back in our next video.